Hey there, and welcome back to Bigfoot's Outdoor Adventure Channel. This is your ultimate destination for all things outdoors. I'm Bigfoot, your guide in navigating the wilderness and mastering the art of survival and primitive living skills. Before we dive into today's adventure, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never have to miss out on any of my latest tips, tricks, or epic outdoor adventures. Today I'll be tackling the arm tiring friction fire. You know, the one that takes a lot of patience. So whether you're a seasoned survivor or just starting your journey, this video will be packed with valuable insights to enhance your friction fire building skills. So grab your gear and join me as we embark on another thrilling outdoor adventure together. We're gonna build some, we're gonna work on uh, some friction fire and ferro rod fire today. But first, we gotta get us some tinder and, uh, and cedar is a really good uh, material to use for tinder and for the bow drill, spindle, and hearth board. So we're just gonna harvest some of this bark here. It's an old cedar, and we're gonna use the inner strands of the bark, which, which is this stuff in, this fine stuff in here, and that'll make really good tinder that'll light up for us and allow us to keep our fire going. Um, we are here, we're gonna show you how to make a friction fire. Um, it's gonna, be uh, not too bad here so what we got to start with here we got a I got a set here so this is my hearth board here it's, I got a hole already we'll use that one um, we might end up having to use another one this one's been used a couple times but we're gonna use this and I got a piece of cedar bark here on the ground that's gonna keep everything dry because the ground's wet it's been raining and maybe a little bit of snow then I got this other little piece of cedar bark here real thin piece that's gonna go right under and so it can catch our dust, which is going to turn into our coal. So what happens is we got our spindle that's going to spin in here and it's going to create dust. And as it creates dust, it's going to fall out that little notch onto my little board and eventually it's going to gather enough heat to create a nice coal. So I'm going to put this down there. Okay. I got my spindle. This is a bearing block. This goes on top of here and this is a hardwood. Preferably you can use fat wood. You don't want to use softwood because it'll just burn right through and burn in your hand. It doesn't feel good. It's not nice. Um, we take our spindle shaft here and we point it pretty pointy. And I just kind of take it, rub some oil on it. You don't have to really if you got this wet stuff, but I do. And then the bottom part is shaped down to a point, but it's a dull point. That's going to create friction for us. And uh, I'm going to take this one because it's got a little bit of, it was you know, we used it. So I'm going to just kind of trim the edges down a little like this get those little burrs knocked off there so that way it spins freely and doesn't sit there and squeak the whole time and get stuck and yeah it can be frustrating so then i'm going to take my knife and i'm just creating facets just making lines in the end to create more friction you can go over the top a little bit and it's got a little crack on the end which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it's not keep it's not going to split on me it's fairly still firm hard solid but that little crack's gonna is like another natural facet okay so there's our spindle oh, we got is. our bearing block i got extra spindle material over here just in case this one doesn't work um we got our little tiny bird's nest here um i, I got some uh fat wood shavings in there cedar bark works good to start a fire and uh, we got our bow here, which is just parachute cord, a bent limb. It's tied down here, and uh, I might actually just tighten it a little tiny bit more, not too much. Nothing worse than getting going and it gets smoking, and then your thing, your bow string's too loose, and so you got to stop and retighten it. Doesn't hurt it, but if it's raining outside, it's cold outside. You just want to get a fire going because you're miserable. Then you don't want to be messing around with stuff like that. So we're gonna start. We're gonna go on the outside of the string inside out like that so that way your spindles on the outside of there you don't want to really do that because you don't want the tip of this going into the wet dirt that much more work all right so we're just gonna get started with our stance foot's gonna go semi close to the hole we put this down in here got a, a little starting spot in our socket there already that's where that's gonna fit. And we're just gonna start slowly sawing. Ah, trying to gather some dust. Yeah, I might have to go ahead and make another hole. 
get another hole going, but that's okay. Got to be patient out here. You try to rush stuff, nothing goes right. Be patient. There we go. That's a little better. We'll just, we'll just get that hole started here. It won't take very long. Sometimes it's better just to go ahead and do that from the get-go, you know, for, but it's easy to be stubborn out here too. It's important not to be, but it's easy to be. Okay, got our V. And um, do it again. Had to gather this up, I'll use my knife. In the new spot. All right, we're good to go. I think I might make some more facets on this thing real quick. Upside in. Everything's ready. Slowly. No. We're going to do a drying cycle or two also since my spindle kind of got a little bit wet. So I'm just going to spin this until it gets smoking a little bit. Okay, and I'll take it out. Allows the moisture that's in the end of my spindle or might be in the end of my spindle to evaporate, same as my hearth board. Let's put it back in. You should be able to talk while you're doing this. It's not it's not hard. It's just you have to be consistent. Okay. Let's dry, dry for a minute. Okay. We're starting to get some black dust there. And I'm going to get this thing ready cuz we're going to go for a hole now. Okay, I think we got a cold air, looks like. Just gonna let that ember up, form a nice solid coal. While we're doing that, I'm gonna take, I don't care about this one because it could be wet a little bit. But my spindle, I want it to stay dry in case I have to do that again. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it somewhere safe. In my inside pocket, somewhere. Yeah, we got a nice little coal going. Now, you don't wanna rush. That can get you into trouble. Then you'll lose your, lose your ember and nothing, that's never any fun. So while we're letting that do its thing, we're gonna come over here. I got some fat wood here. And I'm just gonna really carefully get some of these real fine fat wood shavings. Everything's damp out here, so hopefully this will hopefully this will work for us. Okay, my coal, I'm just gonna very carefully do that. All this little dust is good.
Okay. Now I'm very carefully going to put this in here. Okay, we got fire, set that there. Now we can start putting our kindling. And you gotta be fairly quick at this part because you don't want this fire going out. You don't want to smother it either. So I'm just gonna use all these thin little pieces of dry wood that I gathered up. Take some of this bark and leave it long, but break it up so it burns better. This is cedar bark, not that's what this is here. Burns fairly good. Then you can just slowly start adding bits of wood that are a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger until you got yourself a Bigfoot sized fire. Anyhow, we're uh we got our fire going. I'm gonna put some of get some of this wood on here. And that's that. And that is how we make a friction fire. We'll see you guys later. Mysterious creature of the woods, hairy with big feet. No one could seem to find him, nobody knows where he sleeps. Is he a myth or is he real? Nobody seems to know. And if you pay attention, you'll see he's the star of this show, Bigfoot. Bigfoot.